Good morning. In front of this beautiful, beautiful mural. Let's hear it for this great mural. I love it. Some people are saying this is their new favorite mural in the city of Philadelphia. Good work, you guys. <laughs> okay, so um, I want to welcome everyone here today to uh, the, this dedication of this mural called How We Fish, sponsored by Citizens Bank. <laughs> Woo! And I want to say a few acknowledgments first to our wonderful mayor, who we love, Mayor Nutter. Uh, to City Council uh, in particular, uh, I would like to uh, recognize David O, who's here. David O. And uh, the, the District Councilman, Mark Squilla. I also, he it couldn't be here today, but uh, Gary Stoyer, who is the Deputy Mayor for Arts and Culture and the Creative Economy. And um, so, and we couldn't, you know, this is, a, we're an interesting program, part public, part private, so we're very thankful to government and to the private sector for coming together to make this happen. I would also like to acknowledge Robert Asaro Angelo, the Northeast Regional Representative for U.S. Secretary of Labor, Hilda El Salas. We're so thrilled. So how did this come about? It came about because Dan Fitzpatrick, the president, Citizens Bank, is like a very visionary man. And he called us in one day to talk about ideas, how we could do major projects built on citizens' values. And so he sent me to talk to two fabulous people, Henri Moore, Deborah Kahn, and we started talking about workforce development. And we thought, workforce development? We've never done a project like this, but Mural Arts employs a ton of artists. We have a reentry program. We're working in communities and neighborhoods, and workforce development absolutely makes our hearts sing. So we thought, how could we do a public art project based on that? And then we started to talk about that adage, feed a man a fish and he eats for a day, teach a man to fish and he eats for a lifetime. And we all found that hugely inspiring. And we said, okay, we're gonna do a project that celebrates Philadelphia's workforce, past, present, and future. And so a couple of things had happened. You gotta find a really, really good wall. And this was a good wall. And I wanna thank my wall, my wall friend, <laughs> Scott G. Homel. Where's Scott? Scott's great. So, Scott, I have to just say something about Scott. And some of you here who know me will appreciate this. So, like, we sort of stalked him, right? <laughs> just a little, not badly. Um, but I was calling him, calling him, calling him, and Netanyahu Portier, our fantastic project manager, calling him, like, all times, we need this wall, we want this wall, we want this wall. And he would be, See, I'm driving. <laughs> I can't talk. But you said yes, and we're so grateful. Thank you. And good news, he has a 15-story wall on North Broad Street near Temple. Check. <laughs> We're already looking at that baby. So, <laughs> anyway, we really feel that, uh, you know, workforce development spurs economic development. You could not pull them apart. And so we then, uh, we were, finally, we were just so inspired by this. We thought, okay, now we need to make it happen. Two incredible artists. So Ennis and Eric, raise your hands. Social Impact Studios, Eric Oakday. And people everywhere talk about social practice. Academics, curators, activists, artists, well guess what? This is a model of social practice, this project. We brought people together in, at different community forums in different neighborhoods across the city. We united providers of workforce development services with people who were out of work. People were talking to each other. At first people are like, an art project, we don't want to be involved in an art project. Our budget got cut, we don't even want to talk about it. And you know what happened at the end? People are saying to us, we don't want this project to end. This has been fantastic. We're talking to each other. We ended up shining a light on people who are doing God's work in the city, incredible, extraordinary things for people who need help. And we think that is really fantastic. The artists attended all those meetings. They listened re really carefully. And not only did this project unite people from across the city, but also through their actions, we were able to create a hub. We had citywide paint days. We had a final paint day on Labor Day in the pouring down rain where over 100 people came. And prisoners at Greaterford Prison helped contribute to this, as well as people in our extraordinary reentry program called the Guild. So I want to say something. We're shifting the paradigm about how public art is made. It can be made by a lone practitioner, which is great. And we cheer the fact there's so many wonderful, you know, sculptures in the city. But it can also be made by a team of people. And what we do is we say everyone's voice counts. And what we all want in our life is we want beauty, but we also want meaning. And our projects do just that. And also, I just want to um, say that what was great about this 
is that uh, we were able to unite people across the city. And here is a quote that I just really, I loved when I read this. And, and someone said, I realize that I need skills to help people improve their skills too. We are all learning about what work means in the 21st century and relying on each other to achieve the best we can together. And people often talked about, I remember Philadelphia then, I remember Philadelphia, what it used to be. But guess what? It's the 21st century and Philadelphia is flying at the speed of light. We talked to people from the Manufacturing Alliance. People said, we want in, we want to be represented because Philadelphia has changed, but we're going in really good place, to a really good place. And so it was exciting how this project not only provided people with a voice, but it challenged them and finally it absolutely inspired them. And I want to say, as far as workforce development goes, we feel we try to do our part. Every year we employ about 250 teaching artists and artists. We contribute about $2.2 million to the creative of economy in our restorative justice program people are learning landscaping skills building skills they can build a small house mural making design and technology and we believe deeply in that nexus between economic development and public art over and over and over again we see the murals go beyond art you know what we're called the mural arts program you know what we are it's an integrated model about community and economic development public safety issues education and public art and when all of it comes together and you stir that pot what you get is transformation. And I also want to say a huge thank you. We could not have done this without you. Henri Moore and Deborah Kahn. <laughs> and finally, I know that I am biased. <laughs> and I know that it's fantastic that we have so many murals in this city. But I want to say something. They are inspiring. And they have, over the years, since 1984, they have, they have challenged us, they've inspired us, they have transformed our city's landscape. And, you know, and this collection of work that we've done that includes painting and light and sound and ceramic and mosaic and all these things, they depict the cultural, political, and social climate of our times and the neighborhoods and communities where they are. They are a mirror of where we came from and who we are today. They call attention to our concerns and they are a way we can address our problems. They also convey the pride of great accomplishments. They express cultural identification. They commemorate historical events. And they give voice to our concerns and aspirations. And they become a way to create participation and equity for everyone concerned. And I think of most importance, and that's what this project does, is it calls attention to, to needs at the local level, at the national level, and it reminds us that the search for social justice goes on. And through this project, thank you, citizens. Thank you, Mayor Nutter, for helping our, us do our work. We are able to take art to its furthest degree and make sure it impacts the lives of all the citizens in the city of Philadelphia because it's what they truly deserve. And so now, <laughs> phew, you can see I like my job. I just get so excited. I just want to get out there and do more work. <laughs> Mayor Nutter, I'm never resting, really. <laughs> um, <laughs> and now I want to introduce somebody who I think is extraordinary because he's a leader in our community, but he's, he's dedicated to all the right issues. I have personally been enriched by knowing him, so has Mural Arts, and the city and the region have been sort of enriched immeasurably because of Dan Fitzpatrick. He is not someone who just talks about change. He gets out there and does it every single day. I thank him so much from the bottom of my heart, as I do citizens. Please, a warm welcome for President and CEO of Citizens Bank and RBS Citizens for Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Delaware, Dan. Jay, thank you so much. I, I get tired just, just watching Jay. I don't know where the energy comes from. It's just, just amazing. But uh, first of all, th thank you all for being here. This really is an important project for us all. And I, I, you know, we do everything at Citizens Bank as a team. So we have a great team. Henri Moore, our Director of Public Affairs for Pennsylvania. Deborah Kahn, we've done. Dan Estafi leads our corporate banking business in Philadelphia. is on the Mural Arts Board. So we really do have, have a great team at Citizens Bank looking out for how we can make a positive difference uh, in, in the community here. As the mayor and I were talking earlier, a man's got to know his limitations. And so I certainly know my limitations. And at Citizens Bank, I also want to welcome uh, Heidi Brooks is here who runs uh, our Citizens Bank Foundation. So Heidi, thank you for coming down uh, to be with you here today. Uh, a man's got to know his limitations, right? So we're, our, our mantra, and as Michael likes to hear it all the time, 
Good banking is good citizenship. Well, we take that very seriously at Citizens Bank. Uh, we really do believe it, it captures who we are. But the bottom line is I do know my limitations. And when I said we need to do really great things in the community, so the first thing we did was we convened a meeting of uh, uh, the, the four great leaders uh, in our not-for-profit community. It was Jane Golden, Lisa Nutter, Charmaine Matlack-Turner, and Sister Mary Scully in Project Home. We got together with Henri, myself, and we said, what does good banking is good citizenship mean in Philadelphia? How do we make a difference? And had these different ideas. And then with each of those four great leaders, we ended up doing special projects with each of them. But with, with Jane uh, and the Mural Arts Program, we're so proud of this affiliation. What we talked about is workforce development, what this is. And the bottom line, it's such a beautiful mural that celebrates work. But again, it was more important than just the art. It's the convening of the community groups coming out, talking about the great rich tradition of, of work in Philadelphia, in our region, but then also where are we today and where are we going in the future. And the bottom line, we can talk about workforce development. This is not a problem. It's a huge opportunity. This is something that we have to embrace. It's a really positive thing. And that's why this mural is such a great celebration, because this is a positive day to celebrate, because the opportunities for Philadelphia and the region are tremendous right now. We're really well positioned to have a lot of success, particularly on workforce. And what we understand is that a job isn't just a paycheck. It, it oftentimes a job defines you. I mean, you talk about when people lose a job, I mean, it's right there with the death in the family. It's a really devastating blow. So work is really, really important to the history of Philadelphia, to the Philadelphia currently, and to the great future we have here at Philadelphia. So we understand the value of that work, getting people talking about it. And again, workforce development is key. There's opportunities, there's jobs available right now. What we have to do is prepare our, our young people and our adults for the, for the jobs that are here, we have this great creative economy that, that Jane articulates so well and leads so well, but there's really great opportunity. So on behalf of all of us at Citizens Bank, we could not be a prouder partner with the Mural Arts Program on so many initiatives, but this initiative in particular is really close to us because part of the job of a bank is driving economic vitality in a region while giving back to the community and taking care of one another. So we, again, thank you for your participation. Thank you for allowing us as Citizens Bank to be a key partner on this project as we look forward to many more projects like this. So I have the, the uh, great uh, opportunity now and distinction, and, and I want to thank all the other the, the partners here, but to uh, introduce our, our wonderful mayor, because when we talk about workforce development, one of the things that we have, we have a great mayor in the city of Philadelphia, and he's the education mayor, which is of so critical importance, because you can't talk about workforce development without talking about education. And we have the good fortune that Michael Nutter is not just helping lead us here in Philadelphia, but taking that vision for urban revitalization nationally as, as uh, chairing the, uh, the National uh, uh, Mayor's Conference. Now again, with great pride and great partners, I want to introduce our, our wonderful mayor, our education mayor, Michael Nutter. Good morning, everyone, and uh, Dan, thank you uh, very, very much. Uh, Dan and uh, Henri and Deborah and Heidi, uh, the entire Citizens Bank uh, team, can we please give them another big, big round of applause? They um, just doing great work uh, here, uh, not only as an organization, but certainly Dan's uh, leadership uh, at the Greater Philadelphia Chamber of Commerce, uh, also critically important uh, to, uh, to the city here, so wearing many, many hats. Uh, Jane, uh, spectacular achievement. Uh, you know, the wonderful thing about Jane is, you know, that uh, entire presentation she made, that was all on one breath. Uh, Jane <laughs> has the uh, largest uh, lung capacity of anyone uh, here in the city of Philadelphia. Um, and, uh, you know, should probably be a cyclist or something. But uh, we, we love the work uh, that she does. Uh, but it is that uh, passion. Uh, if you can try to imagine uh, sitting in a meeting uh, with Jane, uh, when she's uh, talking about one of these um, uh, uh, murals or uh, if you can really just try to imagine the extreme pressure that I'm under uh, at budget time uh, when Jane comes in and makes a presentation and you know but for the fact that I have no money I would just say yes just to get the meeting over with um, but uh, she uh, she makes things happen and so when uh, when uh, Jane mentioned earlier how did this happen I was sitting there I was just kind of laughing she goes through this whole well you know, talked to Dan, and then we met with his people, and blah, blah, blah. What really happened was Jane came in, 
Dan realized I could either stretch this out um, and I'm eventually going to say yes, or I could just say yes now and capture about 55 more minutes of my day. So he just said yes and got it over with. So uh, we were here about, a, I guess, a year and a half ago, uh, and uh, I come by uh, uh, Ninth Street here on a regular basis and you kind of see it all uh, all play out. But I, you know, I love the start of these, but I really love the end and to see uh, what the uh, what the true uh, value is. I want to uh, recognize uh, Robert Azaro uh, Angelo uh, from uh, the U.S. Department of Labor. Again, Robert, thank you for being here, and please take our, you know, uh, how we fish and work unites us and, and all of this, and, and we love uh, the U.S. Department of Labor, and please uh, send our best wishes back to Secretary Solis, uh, who uh, came to Philadelphia not too long ago, uh, one of many, uh, many visits. Uh, I've said on a couple occasions, I think uh, that uh, Philadelphia, other than uh, Washington, D.C., we probably have more visits uh, from President Obama's cabinet uh, members than any other city in the United States of America. And the reason is we have so much going on up here and we uh, are able to partner uh, with uh, these agencies. Our artist leader, uh, or artist team rather, Ennis Carter and uh, Eric uh, Okta. Can we please uh, recognize them and thank them? Councilman O, thank you uh, for, uh, for being here. Lost track of me is uh, right there. Thank you for your uh, dedication and commitment. And let us also thank our good friends here. Uh, I have to uh, make, uh, make a visit uh, soon, I'm reminded, at uh, Children's Village, uh, which is really, thank you for lending us your wall. Uh, known them for a long, long uh, period of time and, and just love, uh, love being over there. Um, this uh, mural is certainly about work, and it's about what, how work unites us. And uh, again, the, you know, teach person to fish and all, all, all of that. Um, but work means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. And I think, as uh, Dan uh, mentioned, it's not just about a job. It really is about your personal growth and development. It's about the dignity of work. When I think about uh, my own uh, career, I've been. Uh, I've had a job uh, since I was 13 years old, uh, and except for an 18-month period, uh, many of you know that, of course, I had to resign from uh, city council to run for mayor, and I was uh, unemployed for 18 months. But other than that period of time, I'm 55 years old, I've had a regular job since I was 13 years old. I love work. My work, each and every step, has led to, I didn't know it, I, mean, I did not wake up, uh, was, I was not that kid who said, oh, I want to be mayor of Philadelphia uh, one day. I wanted to be a professional football player, and then I, obviously that didn't work out too well. Um, just wasn't fast enough, um, you know. And uh, then I wanted to be a doctor, and, uh, you know, but Chemistry 3 changed my life uh, in, in that regard. And, but. You know, from working in a drugstore for six years uh, in my neighborhood to working in a nightclub to working at Xerox to working in a financial services firm to 14 and a half years in city council to being a full-time candidate and, and the 98th mayor of this city, uh, I've met so many people along the way. I've had so much help. I've learned so much about the workplace and about myself, and that's what work is about. And certainly the, you know, the pay, whatever it is, uh, but it really is about the experience. It's about where are you going? What's your future about? Who cares about you? What are you engaged in? What are you trying to do? And so for me, it's, it really is about all those experiences and uh, the people that I've met along the way. I've got a young guy uh, with us today, uh, Simon Velez, who's a ninth grader at Cristo Rey, a brand new school uh, here in Philadelphia. And I, what this is about for me is about making sure that a young guy like that has those same experiences, that we have 10,000 summer jobs this upcoming summer in 2013, and that we can achieve that here in the city of Philadelphia. And again, it's not just about the money, although the money is important, and young people like to buy things. Quite frankly, it really is a stimulus program to hire a whole bunch of young people. They're not taking that money and putting it in their 401K. Sorry, Dan. They're not... You know, they might open a little savings account or something at the citizens. They're going to spend that money. It's going to go right back in the marketplace uh, because that's uh, what they do. But equally important, if not more important, and I think it is more important, it's about those experiences in the workplace. And sometimes copying and learning how to copy, that's important, or going running errands. But it's about the interaction. It's about learning things. It's about seeing and ex being exposed to the world of work. Most of us are going to work for a long period of time. 
and it's not too early in your teenage years to know what the world of work is about and to connect with some adult or some group of adults who spend the time to talk with you about this is what I do for a living. This is how I got to be successful. And that you need to stay in school and you have to graduate and then go on to uh, college or higher education or lifelong learning. You know, they say that college may not be for everyone. And we can debate that. But higher education and full-time learning and being a lifelong learner is for everyone. You can't make it in the 21st century without higher learning and higher education. It just won't happen. And so the mural will be a long-lasting symbol of what this is all about. But each and every one of us has a role and has an opportunity to play in the lives of young people, in those who are in the workforce and maybe didn't graduate or couldn't finish because life intervened. Or maybe they're having a literacy uh, challenge, which holds a lot of people back. So beyond the moral imperatives about the world of work and about literacy and about improving your skill sets, Dan can certainly tell you this is an economic imperative for this city. Because the more young people who graduate from high school and go on to college, and the more working age people who go back to school or increase their skill sets or get a certificate and go into the workforce, the more companies will want to be here. And the more companies that are here, we expand our base. The more people who are working, the more college degrees, uh, uh, the higher college degree attainment rate here in the city of Philadelphia makes us a place where people want to live, work, have fun, and raise their families. That's what this is all about and that's why work is so important and that's why that's how work unites us because we become a community when we're a city of learners a city of educated people and a city that works thanks a lot first of all I want to thank the mayor and uh, I was telling him before that I have like five colleagues across the country who have big regions I cover Maine to Virginia and uh, they're all very jealous of uh, the fact that I have Mayor Nutter in my region because they see the work he does uh, for this city, uh, and they know that he just, simple phrases, he just gets it. He gets it about workforce. He gets it about what's important. Uh, he's no drama. Uh, working with his staff and his team is a, a, a delight and a pleasure and uh, to help the citizens of Philadelphia. I want to thank Jane and the, and, the, and the whole team of the Middle Arts Program, Dan from Citizens Bank, uh, and thank you to all the artists. Uh, I'm sorry I couldn't make it to any of the paint days uh, for this mural, but believe me, uh, it would not look this good if I did, trust me. Uh, it's really an honor to be speaking today, not just because of the dignitaries that are here and the crowds that are here, but because of the tremendous amount of work and thought that went into this mural. The imagery and messages in this wall are, quite frankly, overwhelming and inspiring. Each square foot of this mural could inspire hundreds of essays uh, from here to eternity uh, of school children in Philadelphia. Uh, one of my favorite things about Philadelphia, uh, where my family's from, is not just its amazing history as the birthplace of our nation, but the city that is acutely aware of the fact that all of its greatest historical moments weren't the success of individuals, but the triumphs of great people working together. That's why I think one of the mural's elements is so appropriate for this city. I don't know if you noticed, but there's energy bursts, especially in the blue, uh, little bursts of like energy rays that occur whenever people are unified through work. I think it's also a great symbol of when I think our government works best and we are unified in our work. Mayor Nutter has been a great leader in this regard. He's always looking for new and novel ways for all levels of government to work together to empower the people in this city and empower the region. This is what President Obama is talking about when he says we're stronger when we work together. It's not just a statement of American values. It's also a winning strategy for growth and progress. Next year, the U.S. Department of Labor is celebrating our 100th anniversary protecting workers. The Department of Labor wasn't created by one person or one president is the direct product of half of a century of organizing, uh, of a campaign by organized labor for a voice in the cabinet, and the indirect product of the progressive movement itself. My colleagues and I across our 31 sub-agencies work together to fulfill the mission of our department, which I have right here in the back of my business card. It reads, to foster, promote, and develop the welfare of the wage earners, job seekers, and retirees of the United States, improve working conditions, advance opportunities for profitable employment, and assure work-related benefits and rights. While these goals are nothing more than basic fairness, equality, and safety in the workplace, we're still working tirelessly to achieve these basic goals 100 years later. During the preparation for this mural, uh, many communities from North Philadelphia to Chinatown to Germantown, people spoke about how their neighborhood revolved around a, co a clothing factory as a common stepping stone job for people to coming to Philadelphia. You know, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Then as now, immigrants are teeming into the city to pursue the American dream. And now, just as then, 
There are many employers who don't realize that workers should be able to pursue these dreams without fear of injury or death, without fear of threats or intimidation or wage theft. I'm proud to be a part of the team at the Department of Labor that works to protect all workers, especially immigrant workers. That's why OSHA, our worker safety agency, has conducted Latino and Asian American safety summits here in Philadelphia and across this country, specifically focused on training immigrant workers in safe workplaces and how to report dangerous conditions. It's why our Wage and Hour Division launched the We Can Help campaign to make it easier for workers to know their rights, underscore that wage and hour la laws apply to all workers in the United States, regardless of immigration status. The campaign helps connect America's most vulnerable and low-wage workers with a broad array of services offered by the Department of Labor. It places a special focus on reaching out to employees in such industries as construction, janitorial work, hotel motel services, food service, and home health care. All workers in this country deserve respect. It doesn't matter where they came from or how they got here. It doesn't matter if they have money or means. It doesn't matter if they pick vegetables in our fields or cook them in our restaurants. All working people in this state, in this city, are entitled to dignity and respect. A lot of times you hear people in government talk about a cliche about breaking down silos. And I don't think there's any silos in this picture, but there is a farm. Uh, and while breaking down silos is a, a very admirable goal, I am most proud of the Department of Labor, not just when we break down silos, which we're very good at, but we break down the front gate and break out of the barn and break out of the farm and get out into the community with the people we serve to fulfill our mission to protect our workers. It doesn't only apply to protecting workers and the jobs they have. We've also provided grants and training and new, innovate, new and innovative programs for worker training. A few months back on the other side of the state, Secretary Solis announced our Workforce Innovation Fund Grants Program, which is going to award hundreds of millions of dollars to dozens of grantees across this country to pioneer new workforce models using collaborations between local unions, startups, industry leaders, workforce development professionals, and universities. The Obama administration has made unprecedented investments of billions of dollars in our community colleges to ensure our workforce training system is more accessible to more people than more places than it ever has been. It's these kind of innovative, innovative collaborations, just like the one behind us, that will shape, educate, and train the Philadelphia that we will make our history with. I was watching a video about the mural, and there was a gentleman at one of the painting days, maybe he's here today, I don't know, he, is, he was there with his adorable daughter, Veronica Rose, because she goes to school right here. And he wanted to be able to point to her at this wall and say to her, you painted that square right there. Well, I think that all of us should look at this mural but th that way. But not just the mural, but the city as a whole. As just everyone here uh, looked at blank spaces, with you, there's, when you first looked at the video, there's all this basic pencils uh, stenciled in, outlines to fill in. Uh, and it turned out this beautiful, inspiring product behind us. We, the leaders in government, the leaders in business, the leaders in our community, need to look at the stenciled outline of every worker, every person, every family, and every block in this city, and figure out how we are going to work together to fill that stenciled outline in with vibrant color of knowledge, of hope, and opportunity. Thank you all for coming today. I look forward to working with everybody here to improve the fabric of this great city. Nice today. Okay, and now I get to introduce the artists. So we have an artist team. So first, I want to talk for a minute about Ennis Carter, who I've known for many, many years. She is the founder and director of uh, Social Impact Studios, fantastic organization. And um, what they do is she emphasizes design and communication. And this is what I love. She combines artistry and activism. Yay, Ennis. And then we have Eric Oakday, who I think I've known and worked with since he graduated from art school my goodness and he was he started out as a teacher in our program and then directed more educational programs and became a muralist and and now is um he is teaching uh, young people but he also is our teacher at a greaterford prison and what he's doing and this is really extraordinary is the men who are lifers who will never get out behind they're behind those walls are creating extraordinary works of art on parachute cloth that then go around and go on walls of schools and community centers that are really bleak. And Eric really inspires them to think, you know, I may never get out, but um, I can give back. And work for them means everything. And we've seen it in the, the work you've done in reentry, in the prisons, with our after school programs. And Eric's work graces the sides of buildings throughout the city. So it's a dynamic team. They put their heart and soul into it, and it absolutely shows. And we applaud you for all you've done. Please come up to say a few words. Okay, let's see if this goes down far enough. Yes. 
Good morning. Thank you so much for coming and joining us. I know many people have been on this road with all of us. They've been at paint days, they've been at community meetings, and this is what this project is all about. It's about bringing people together to celebrate how we overlap and uh, moments where we do share um, work as a way that we've been united. So, um, I, you know, I almost don't need to speak because you three uh, did a pretty good job um, summing up how this, what this means. Um, but I wanted to tell you a little bit about how it came about uh, because this was very much uh, about community engagement uh, and hearing the stories and the voices of the community out there um, is really the, the beginning. Uh, so to get to this point where we have real quotes from real folks, um, there's a poster that's been developed with a story behind all of the uh, symbols on the, on the wall, so you should pick one up. Um, there are real quotes, real stories, all these different words that came up. Um, we had nine different community conversations, um, and we, were, we worked, uh, luckily, with the Penn Center for Civic Engagement on that. Um, and it was all kind of culminated with a workforce development forum um, where professionals came together to really talk about what are we going to do next and how do we take work to the next level. Um, those community conversations were in North Philly, South Philly, Germantown. Here in Chinatown, we had several. We had some with the kids, and their kids' quotes are on the wall. Um, and on the website, you can see a full list of uh, quotes, like, work means wearing a hat. And our friends from Franklin Fountain back there are, uh, are sporting that today. Um, <laughs> So um, so this was all about stories and gathering stories, and we already heard a lot about this. It was personal. It was, it was community-based. Um, the one thing that I found most surprising was even in this difficult time since the last few years um, that everybody was actually hopeful, that people were really excited about the notion that work was what was going to bring us back together, that we had all had experiences like what the mayor talked about where we had been working and we met people we never would have met before. We got to do things we never would have gotten to do, all through work. So it was a very hopeful picture. Um, so that's how we came up with the answer to the question, how we fish, question mark, work unites us. That's how we fish. We don't go out alone with a pole and get our fish. We have to work together. We have to be a community. Um, and of course, if anybody knows anything about me um, and our work at Social Impact Studios, uh, we are uh, carriers of the torch of the public, uh, the public uh, art program during the WPA. Um, and so we really reference the WPA a lot in here, but try to take it into the 21st century. So I'm going to let Eric talk about um, how that connects and what came next. Hi. Bring it up. So we. Uh, <coughs> We came from these meetings all throughout the city. I really like to call this project the second citywide project in the city because we really were in every corner of Philadelphia. And, and just how, in the same way that Ennis and I worked, uh, it, we started by finding the commonality through all those different meetings um, and looking at where, we could, where, where these stories uh, overlapped and how we could start to bring that about in the design. Uh, and it really came through um, by breaking it up into four different economies uh, starting out in an agricultural economy, an industrial economy, um, a merchant-based economy, and a knowledge-based future economy um, uh, that, that are all uh, indicative of the city and, and represent the city really well. Um, and then there was a couple symbols. We both started out with sort of competing visions for the design, and then we started to see where we can pull some, some commonality uh, from both into it. And uh, one of the first things that we had was this... Uh, part of um, these, these hands that are sort of stitching together this fabric. And that came out of different meetings, right? But there's the whole, the big word for this project was serendipitous, because there was a whole lot of serendipitous occurrences and things. And this building uh, was the home for the w Women's Garment Workers Union. So there was all these little symbols that just became so appropriate and so right for this mural. Uh, and then Ennis spent this time weaving this subcontext and this substory through the mural in the actual cloth itself that spoke back to all the different personal stories in those meetings. And as was mentioned before, there are these little bursts of energy that come back throughout all these different interactions of, of work uniting people. And um, we felt from the beginning that it was really important to showcase stained glass because Philadelphia used to be a major stained glass hub uh, of the entire United States for a long, long time. So we wanted that to be an important part of this mural as well. And uh, the shop windows, and the bursts of, of energy and rays that are coming from the sewing are all done in, in tons and tons of stained glass um, 
oh, and uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the uh, the paint days for this mural. I, I think this has probably seen the most amount of volunteers that I've ever done. I, I think we're talking, yeah. Somewhere in the area of four to five hundred people came out, and I, I we had this beautiful space in the mural arts tour office. There's Stan right there in the back. And uh, it, it was a wonderful collaboration with them and a great summer. And people could just walk in all day long and see us working on this project, learn about the subject. And that's just, you don't get that kind of interaction all the time. So it was a really unique experience. Um, tons of people came out. We had lots of paint days. We had an amazing paint day on Labor Day in the pouring rain for three hours. And a lot of people are here. There was one tent and it was just rain pouring and we had to do some patchwork. And it was incredible. But people came out for the entire day and worked and it was it was really beautiful. And I want to thank Netanel for being a powerhouse for this. I mean, this has been a dream. It really has. Uh, but I want to, okay, so my team. Uh, I want to thank Brianna Dawkins, who is my lead assistant. Mike Reale, my co-collaborator with Glass. Salam Smith, we've been together for a while now. Katie Lillard, I want to thank the SCI uh, Greaterford Mural Arts class. It's my class that I've taught for eight years in Graterford. I don't do a thing without them these days, and it's been, it's been incredible. Uh, my, our interns, Emily Ann Ray, Henry Tan, Malachi Floyd, Diana Gonzalez, Sarah Coker, uh, Nathaniel Lee, who helped us grind all this stuff away to put the glass up on the wall, and, uh, and Pamela Folk.